1st March is the date, UGC Net English Literature exam. Well, the dates are out and last night Kalyani ma'am did a live session with us telling us about the short, short topics that will be covered in this exam, okay? And another great initiative by TESS, we're sure that now you must be revising the course, of course, so help you, to help you with your revision, we have started with Backward Countdown or Ulti Ginti of the exam with important topics, question answers. Yes, every day I will come with 50 multiple choice question answers related to different topics that will help you immensely on 1st March, okay? So today's topic of discussion is British literature. Let's begin. It will be fast question, fast answer, a bumper round, okay? Sit, relax, just take your water bottles in your hand and be with me on this joyful ride right? Let's come to question number one. Which of the following is not a poem by Stephen Spender? Option A, an elementary school classroom in a slum. B, daybreak. C, bagpipe music. Or D, oh night, oh trembling night. Not a poem by Stephen Spender. It is option C, bagpipe music. Let's move to question number two. Which of the following poets is not a movement poet? Option A, Philip Larkin. B, Elizabeth Jennings. C, Donald Davey. Or D, Ted Hughes. Not a movement poet. You know it. It is option D, Ted Hughes, right? Question number three. What is the original name of Joseph Conrad? Read the spellings carefully. Option A, this is Joseph with a PH. So Joseph Corzinio Whiskey. B is Joseph with an F, Corzinio Whiskey. C is Joseph Corzan or D is none of the above. But it is option B, Joseph with an F, Corzinio Whiskey. Okay, let's move on to question number four. The Pearl of Love is a famous work by H.G. Wells. It is a option A, novella. Sorry, option A, novel. B, novella, C, short story, or D, a political satire. The pearl of love is a, well, the answer is option C, short story, right? Don't worry, agar thode bohat aare hai to, this is the time to learn more, right? And we are here. Let's move to question number five. Only connect is the famous epigraph to, option A, where angels fear to tread, B, a passage to India. C, Howard's N, or D, a room with a view. Only connect is the epigraph to option C, Howard's End. Let's move to question number six. In Joyce's, a portrait of the artist as a young man, Stephen Dedalus wrote a poem to Emma. This poem is entitled as option A, to E.T., B, to E.C., C, to Emma. Or D, diary. Bataye, Stephen Dedalus ne poem liki Emma ko aur usse entitled kiya as option B, 2 E, C. Right? Let's move on to question number seven. J.G. Farrell's A Girl in the Head is a pastiche novel with the elements from option A, Naipaul's A House for Mr. Biswas and Nabokov's Lolita. B, Joyce's Ulysses and Dubliners. C, Virginia Woolf's To the Lighthouse and Mrs. Dalloway. Or D, Nabokov's Lolita and Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway. A girl in the head has elements from? The answer is option A, Naipaul's A House for Mr. Biswas and Nabokov's Lolita. Okay, let's move on to question number eight. The Myth of Sisyphus was published in option A. Just a second. Yeah. The Myth of Sisyphus was published in A, 1940, B, 1942, C, 1948, or D, 1946. Bataye, it is option B, 1942. Okay. Question number nine. Which of the following plays by Tom Stoppard was based on his earlier radio play, in the native state. So Tom Stoppard's play based on in the native state is 
ऑप्शन ए आर के डिया बी इंडियन इंक सी द कोस्ट ऑफ यूटोपिया और डी प्रोफेशनल फाउल इट इज ऑप्शन बी द इंडियन इंक राइट हियर इज इंडियन इंक क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन Tales of Hearsay is a posthumous collection of four tales by option A Joseph Conrad B Rudyard Kipling C D H Lawrence or D James Joyce Kipling has a G missing <laughs> but I Tales of Hearsay is by yes the answer is option A Joseph Conrad chale aage badhe to question number 11 Ten done, forty more to go. Question number eleven: Which of the following essays by Virginia Woolf was originally written as a review of anthology by Ernest Rhys? Which of the following essays by Woolf was written as a review of anthology by Ernest Rhys? The options are A. Modern fiction. B. The Plumage Bill. C. Mr. Bennett and Mrs. Brown. Or D. The Modern Essay. You know it. The answer is option D. The Modern Essay. Okay. Here is the Modern Essay for you. Question number twelve. Kimbal Hara is a character created by. Kimbal Hara is by. Option A G B Shaw B H G Wells C Rudyard Kipling or D E M Foster. You know it. It is option C Rudyard Kipling, right? Chale question number thirteen ki tara. Which of the following characters do not appear in E M Foster's A Passage to India? Do not appear in A Passage to India. Option A Lucy Honey Church B Doctor Aziz. C. Professor Godbole or D. Mrs. Moore. Who is it? It is option A. Lucy. Lucy does not come in a passage to India. Let's move on. Question number fourteen. Which war poet has written the poems "Futility," "Dolce e Decorum Est," and "The Parable of the Old Men and the Young"? Who has written these? Option A. Rupert Brooke. B. Siegfried Sassoon. C. Wilfred Owen. Or D. Isaac Rosenberg. Who has written it? Well, it is option C. Wilfred Sassoon. Okay, let's move on to question number fifteen. Which novel by the famous author Ian McEwan was made into an Oscar-winning film? Your options are A. Atonement, B. Amsterdam, C. Saturday, or D. Sweet Tooth. Which movie? Made into a sorry, which novel made into a film written by Ian McEwan? The answer is option A, Atonement. Okay, let's move on to question number sixteen. Who published his crime fiction under the pen name Dan Kavanagh? Your options are A, John Van Wyl, B, John Wayne, C, John Brain, or D, Julian Barnes. Tell me. Pen name Dan Kavanagh. You know it. It is the pen name of Julian Burns. Cool. Let's move on to question number seventeen. In which of the following novels each chapter begins with an epigraph? The first one taken from the Riddle by Thomas Hardy. Okay. Option A: The French Lieutenant's Woman. B: The Wind from Nowhere. C: Empire of the Sun. Or D a maggot. Tell me, tell me, which of the novel? Well, the answer is option A, the French Lieutenant Woman. Okay, this takes us to question number eighteen. Please do not worry. Even if you know little bit, it's okay. At least you're learning right now. This is not the day of your exam. This is the day of revision. Question number eighteen. Which of the following novels by Iris Murdoch is the story of Marianne Taylor, a governess in a remote castle, learns that her employer Hannah is a prisoner in the castle and a symbol of persecuted virtue. So basically, a novel by Iris, which tells us the story of Marianne Taylor. The options are A: 
the sand castle, B, the unicorn, C, the sea, the sea, or D, the black prince? Tell me, do you know it? Yes, you do. It is option B, the unicorn. Question number 19. Which of the following is not a novel in the Malayan trilogy by Anthony Burgess? Option A, Time for a Tiger. B, Enemy in the Blanket. C, The Brass Butterfly. Or D, Beds in the East. Which is not a part of the trilogy? The answer is option C, The Brass Butterfly. Okay, let's move on to question number 20. Oceania, Eurasia and Dash are the three superpowers mentioned in the novel 1984. Which, which is this dash, the third superpower mentioned in 1984? Option A, East Asia, B, Eurasia, C, West Asia, or D, Asiana. Tell me, do you know it? It is Oceania, Eurasia, and East Asia. So the answer is option A, East Asia. Question number 21. Which of the following novels by George Orwell is about his experiences as a volunteer with the Republican Army during the Se Spanish Civil War. So George Orwell is talking about his time in the war during the Spanish Civil War in which of the novels? The options are A, The Road to Wigan Pierre, B, Homage to Catalonia, C, Coming Up for Air, or D, Burmese Days. Tell me. It is option B, homage to Catalonia. Okay, easy. This takes us to question number 21. Who wrote the play A Mouthful of Birds in 1986? An experiment with dance theater incorporating techniques developed by Antonin Artaud in his theater of cruelty. Just tell me who wrote A Mouthful of Birds. That will be enough. Your options are A, Peter Barnes, B, Carol Churchill, C, Angela Carter, or D, Tom Stoppard. Who, a mouthful of birds. It is written by option B, Carol Churchill. Okay, Chale, question number 23 ki tara. Which of the following writers wrote Stocky and Company, a novel about adolescent boys at British boarding school? Option A, Joseph Conrad, B, H. G. Wells, C, Rudyard Kipling, or D, Arnold Bennett. Tell me, Stocky and Company, who has written it? It is option C, Rudyard Kipling. Oh, sorry, Kipling. <laughs> okay, question number 24. Who wrote the novel, An Outcast of the Islands? which is about his own experience as a mate of a steamer called the Widar. Bataye, kisne likha hai an outcast of the islands? Your options are A, Joseph Conrad, B, G, M, Singe, C, Seen O, K, C, or D, James Joyce. It is option A, Joseph Conrad. Okay, this takes us to question number 25. The Inheritance is a play by Matthew Lopez, premiered in London, is inspired by the 1910 novel of, your options are A, The Passage to India, B, Candida, C, Howard's End, or D, St. Joan. The Inheritance is inspired by, the answer is option C, Howard's End. Okay, question number 26. Rupert Brooke's poem, Tiere Tahiti, okay, Tiere Tahiti, influenced F. Scott Fitzgerald to write his, your options are A, This Side of Paradise, B, The Beautiful and Damned, C, The Great Gatsby, or D, Tender is the Night. Tell me the answer. Well, it is option A, this side of paradise. Well, even we can see our paradise coming soon, right? Net exam is a paradise. Let's not take it as hell. No, it is a paradise which will open our pathways to various, various areas in our lives, right? Okay, 
चलिए हाफ क्वेश्चन डन एट ट्वेंटी नाउ गोइंग टू ट्वेंटी सेवन यू नो इट टूडे वी आर डिस्कसिंग ब्रिटिश लिटरेचर एवरी डे आई एम गोइंग टू कम डोंट वरी गेट फिफ्टी क्वेश्चन फॉर यू टू हेल्प यू विद नेट क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी सेवन द ग्रीव स्ट्राइक इन विडो मौर्या इज अ कैरेक्टर फ्रॉम ए राइडर्स टू द सी बी द टिंकर्स वेडिंग सी द एर आईलैंड और डी द वेल ऑफ द सेंट्स बताइए इट इज ऑप्शन ए राइडर्स टू द सी हैज मौर्या एज अ कैरेक्टर ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी एट इन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग प्लेस Shaw acknowledges his debt to Chekhov, in particular to the cherry orchard. The options are A, back to Methuselah; B, man and Superman; C, heartbreak house; or D, Pygmalion. Say Shaw is acknowledging his debt to Chekhov in this play. Well, the answer is option C, heartbreak house. Heartbreak house. Let's move on to question number twenty-nine. The character of Gudrun in Women in Love is chiefly based on which character? So Gudrun is based on which character? Option A, Virginia Woolf; B, Frida; C, Catherine Mansfield; or D, George Eliot. You know it, right? It is option C, Catherine Mansfield. Okay. This takes us to question number thirty in British literature MCQs by Tess. Loser takes all is a 1955 novella by option A Graham Greene, B G B Shaw, C Arnold Bennett, or D Evelyn Waugh. Who is it? It is option A Graham Greene. Okay. Question number thirty-one. Cecil Day Lewis belongs to the A Auden Generation group, B Tractarian group. C Scribblers Group or D Abbey Theatre Group. Cecil Day Lewis, C D Lewis belongs to option A Alden Generation Group, right? Question number thirty-two. In Canterbury Tales, just a second. In Canterbury Tales, which traveller tells the story of a knight of King Arthur's court who marries an old hag? The options are A, the wife of Bath; B, the monk; C, the friar; or D, the knight. Who told the story of a knight of King Arthur's court? It is option A, the wife of Bath. Okay. Question number thirty-three on your screen. What is the subtitle of the prelude by Wordsworth? Option A, growth of a poet's mind. B, an autobiography. C. A poet's mind, or D. A window to my soul. Subtitle of the prelude is. It is option A. Growth of a poet's mind. Question thirty-four. What is the name of the literary magazine of the pre-Raphaelites? Option A. The Radical. B. The Dial. C. The Germ. Or D. The Color. Pre-Raphaelite ki magazine ko kaha jata tha? Germs, जो कि बिल्कुल हमारे घर में नहीं होने चाहिए right? Question number thirty-five. Which book of Thomas Hardy is not pessimistic? A. Jude the Obscure. B. The Return of the Native. C. Tess of the Derber Ville. Or D. A Pair of Blue Eyes. A not pessimistic novel by Thomas Hardy is option D. A Pair of Blue Eyes. Right? Pair of lovely blue eyes. Let's move on to question number thirty-six. Who does Julian and Count Medallo respectively represent in P. B. Shelley's work? Your options are A. Wordsworth and Coleridge, B. Byron and Keats, C. Wordsworth and Sade, or D. Shelley and Byron. Come on, Julian is represented by option D. Shelley and Count Medallo is represented by. Lord Byron. Question number thirty-seven. Identify the first novel written by Margaret Drabble. Your options are A. The Garrick Ear, B. The Millstone, C. A Summer Bird Cage, or D. Jerusalem the Golden. First novel by Margaret Drabble is 
Option C, a summer bird cage. Right? Let's move on to question number 38. Where is room number 101, the torture chamber in the novel 1984 located? Your options are A, the Ministry of Peace. B, the basement of O'Brien's apartment. C, the Ministry of Love. Or D, the Ministry of Truth. Room number 101 is located in the Ministry of Love. Option C. Question number 39 for you. What happens to the speaker towards the end of the poem, Church Going? Okay, listen to the options. A, the speaker mocks devotees who came there to offer their prayers. B, speaker's criticism against the church and religion is confirmed. C, speaker realizes how wrong he is in criticizing the church and becomes a devotee yet again. Or option D, though not religious, the speaker realizes that the church has certain important functions in a society. Tell me, end of church going, the poet re realizes it is option D. <clears throat> I just read it. I will not read it again. Question number 40. 40. 40. Society is a rhyme. Or 40. Question number 40 on your screen. The vegetation myth or the myth of fertility in Iliad's The Waste Land is taken from. Your options are A, The Golden Bow by James Fraser. B, From Ritual to Romance by Jesse L. West. C, Myth of Fisher King. Or D, Satyricon by Petronius. But I, the fertility myth is taken from. The answer is option A, The Golden Bow by James Fraser. Question number 41, just 10 more to go. Which of the following novels by Graham Greene is set in London? Your options are A, The End of the Affair, B, The Heart of the Matter, C, The Honorary Council, or D, The Comedians. Graham Greene's novel set in London is option A, The End of the Affair. Here it is. Bold. Question number 42. In the poem, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, we see references of Shakespeare's plays. Okay, Identify the play which is not referenced. Your options are A. Ha Henry IV Part II, B. Twelfth Night, C. Hamlet, or D. A Midsummer Night's Dream. Which one is not referenced? It is option D. A Midsummer Night's Dream. Okay? This takes us to question number 43. Who is the protagonist of A Handful of Dust by Evelyn Waugh? Option A, Tony Last. B, William Haley. C, John Newton. Or D, George Romney. Protagonist of A Handful of Dust is option A, Tony Last. Okay? Question number 44. Who said that the sonnet in Milton's hand becomes a trumpet? Your options are A. Dr. Johnson, B. Alfred Tennyson, C. S. T. Coleridge, or D. William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth ne bola ji. For Milton, the sonnet becomes trumpet. Poo -poo -poo -poo. That's a trumpet sound, no? <laughs> Question number 45. Who is the author of the 2010 Booker Prize winning novel, The Finkler Question? Your options are A, Hilary Mantle, B, George Saunders, C, Howard Jacobson, or D, Marlon James. Who has written the Finkler question? Well, the answer is... Wait a minute. I told you the correct, right? Yeah, we, we said the Finkler question, right? So the Finkler question is written by... Howard Jacobson. Yes, that's the answer. Option C, Howard Jacobson. Okay. And this takes us to question number, just a second, 46. Who of the following is not a character in Middle March? Okay. Not a character. Your options are A, Nicholas Bulstrode, B, Arthur Brooke, C, Edward Casabon, or D, Josiah Bounderby. Tell me the answer to this. Not a character in middle March. The answer is option D, Josiah Bounder by. Okay, this takes us to 
Question number 47. Which poem by Isra Pound addresses his own alleged failure as a poet? Okay, Isra talks about his failure as a poet in your options are A, the Cantos, B, Repost, C, Cathay, or D, Hugh Selvin Mobley. What is it? It is option D, Hugh Selvin Mobley. And this takes us to question number 48. Listen to this. Which among the following is not true about 1984? Option A. It was published on 8th June by Secker and Warburg as the ninth and final book completed in his lifetime. Is it correct? It is correct. Option B. This work is a caustic attack on the totalitarian regime in Soviet Russia and Nazi Germany. Is it correct about 1984? Yes, correct. Option C. O'Brien is a member of the Brotherhood who assists Winston Smith to escape from Room 101. Oh, no, no, no. O'Brien is not a member of the Brotherhood. He, I mean, he's a member, but then he does not assist Win Winston Smith. He, in fact, he's the one who catches Winston Smith, right? So option C is not correct. And let's move on to option D. Winston works in the Ministry of Truth where his job is to alter historical records to fit the needs of the party. Okay, did you get it? Well, let's move on to question number, you know, I think there is something wrong about question number 48. I have a feeling. Let me just look into it and I will write the answer of it in the comment section below. Okay, don't worry. The answer will come in the comment section. Just uh, look there. Question number 49. In Brave New World, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, and Epsilon are, your options are A, departments of the government, B, scientific institutions that control the people in various ways, C, the names of regions, or D, the names of social classes. Tell me, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon are, option D, the names of social classes, okay? And this takes us to question number 50. Portrait of a Lady is a poem by American-British poet T.S. Eliot, first published in September 1915. The epigraph of the poem is taken from which of the following plays? Basically, the epigraph of Portrait of a Lady is taken from. Your options are A. Dr. Faustus, B. The Tempest, C. The Jew of Malta, or D. Paradise Lost. Come on, you know it, right? It is option C. The Jew of Malta. And we are done with today's 50 questions of British literature. Read around them. Of course, do your own research. And whatever you have done till now, keep on revising. It will help you. And do not stress. It will take you nowhere. Just enjoy, relax, be in the moment, and you will do it. Tomorrow, I will bring 50 question answers from American literature. So be there, be with us. Team Test loves you and we wish you all the very best for your exam. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Have a lovely day.